So all right, guys, uh, today we're going to go over the Chapter 13 story, Echo and Narcissus. Okay, uh, these chapters that we're wrapping up the year with, they don't really introduce anything too major. So um, where a new thing is introduced, I will try to talk about it a little bit, but let's try to get through the story quickly here. All right, um, let's jump into the translation. Narcissus was, remember, Arat is the imperfect of to be. Narcissus was a handsome boy. Sorry about the background noise. Many girls loved, and that's the perfect tense. Uh, many girls loved him. Accusative form from the he, she, it chart. Many, many girls loved him, but um, that man... Or sometimes you can just say he for Eli. But that man loved... And that's the perfect tense also. None of them. Many girls loved him, but that man loved none of them. Literally none out of them. But none of them is what we would say in English. So this part gave you guys a little bit of trouble. Um, ipse is from a new word, himself. And it's the nominative, you can tell, because it's the listed form right here, masculine, feminine, neuter. So you would say, like, he himself, which is tricky. Um, I don't know if anybody got that, but he himself loved. That was new in this chapter, I think. He himself loved only himself. Solemn here is best translated as only. I probably should have given you a note on that. Um, and then say is... A, what's called a reflexive pronoun in the accusative case. So reflexive means it reflects whatever the subject was. So the subject is he, he himself, um, loved only himself. It was If it was ipsa uh, in the beginning here, like that, it would translate as she herself only loved herself. All right, so say just repeats whatever the subject is uh, in the accusative. He himself loved only himself and led a life in the woods. The nymph Echo had loved, all right, pluperfect. Um, it's the Aramarasarat in there. Sharsh. The nymph Echo had loved Narcissus for a long time. But, and then this part was tricky, but, hold on, I got to pause here. All right, sorry about that. So the nymph Echo had loved Narcissus for a long time, but, and then you want to jump to the verb here, because these forms are accusative, but she had never been able to fit the numquam in there. And that's the verb to be able in the pluperfect. But she had never been able to speak or to say her own love to him. The EI is dative um, from the Isaiah id chart. So, but she had never been able to speak her own love to him. So that's really tricky. All right. A lot of you got this next part. Uh, if narcissus called, once again, if you see that V, it's probably the perfect tense. Uh, it's just your basic past. If narcissus called, are you here? And that's from the SUMS S chart. So that's the U R. Are you here? Echo called here. If he said, where are you? Come to me, she said me. Um, so Echo's curse was that she could only repeat the previous word of somebody else. Um, yeah, I think that part I left out. So pretty important. Uh, plot point but i think yeah there was supposed to be a, a, more of this sentence and it was like she was only able to repeat 
um, the last word of another. But you guys did the Ed puzzle, so you kind of know what her deal was. She was cursed uh, that way by Juno, I believe. All right, so um, so if Narcissus called, are you here? Echo called here. If he said, and this is from he. Okay, I'm going to have to pause here real quick. Sorry. All right. Um, so if he said, where are you? Come to me. She said, me. All right. Uh, but Narcissus did not come to her. And Echo did not live. Um, you can tell that's from the perfect tense because the X right here, the third principal part of live. And Echo did not live for a long time. Um, she lost. Once again, perfect tense. She lost her whole body. But now we are able to hear. And for those of you that got the we here, good job. Um, but now we are able to hear her voice. And ES is the genitive, the voice of her or her voice. But now we are able to hear her voice. Meanwhile, Narcissus saw himself in the water. There's that say again, just repeats whatever the subject is. Meanwhile, Narcissus saw himself in the water and was not able to turn away his eyes all right suos reflexive kind of adjective literally his own eyes but you could just say his eyes and nurse and he was not able to turn away his eyes uh, okay gave you super a he was overcome by a great love of himself all right i just translated that for you he was overcome by a great love of himself time flies Or time flees, literally, but that's the origin of the term, time flies. Um, which I think was one of our Latin phrases of the day, I'm not sure. All right, Narcissus remained, and that's the perfect tense again. Because you can see the third principal part here. Narcissus remained in the same place. All right, um, let's try to see if you guys could figure that out. Both these words go together. Anything with dem on the end means the same. You can see the O and the O go together here. So Narcissus remained, they're all ablative, in the same place. His friends, there's that ES for his again. His friends were not able to find him. E of him. His friends were not able to find him. Where that man had been, and a lot of you missed this one, um, this is from the verb to be, which I told you down here, it's from the third principal part. So erat is the pluperfect ending. So had been, where that man had been, now a beautiful flower stands. Where that man had been, now a beautiful flower stands. Today, we call, good job if you got the we ending, M-U-S on the verb. Today we call this flower Narcissus, which is a true story. Um, it's like a, a daisy, I think, the Narcissus flower. Finally here, I guess moral, the moral of the story, uh, men ought not to love themselves say works for plural too so it just repeats the subject so the subject was men so men ought not to love themselves too much all right that's it um okay so echo turns into just her voice which you hear whenever you shout out and narcissus turned into a flower um and that flower grows by water because he uh, was stuck staring at himself turned into a flower all right. 
It's actually from Ovid's Metamorphosis, which is a long, long poem. Which is, sorry about the background noise. A collection of uh, short stories. It's a good read in English. A lot of our mythology stories come from it. Ovid was um, a famous Roman poet. And all the, a lot of the mythology stories end with the characters turning into something. So this narcissist story is from that. And um, he turns into a flower at the end. Ovid's Metamorphosis. Check it out. In English, the Latin's pretty tough. All right. 